Well, at six o'clock, I'm gonna try to get a workout in. And while I work out, I usually listen to an audiobook at two times speed. <laughs> Before the fun part of my day starts and I can just read, um, I have to submit some assignments. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Um, yeah. some reading done. Currently I'm reading the book Hamnet. It's a story based on um, Agnes or Anne Hathaway's life. Not the actress but the wife who was married to William Shakespeare. Um, I was really excited to read this book because when I was young I used to be in a Shakespeare theater company and we did a lot of plays. I know that was super cool anyway so i'm really excited to read this book i'm about 60 pages in and so far i'm just really loving the descriptions of anne um, and the backstories of how her and william meet this is fictionalized so i'm not really reading it based on like accuracy or like the accurate historical like depictions of of their life it but it's a very interesting book um and I also read this morning um, a bit of Filthy Animals, which is a Brian Terry uh, short story collection. I've been reading a short story a day um, so that I can kind of get a, um, a small dose of, of each of those stories, um, testing that out to see if I actually like remember short stories more by chucking them up instead of reading them, uh, reading the whole collection. So the plan for the day is to um, run some errands. My grandma's birthday is today, so we're gonna be picking up some things for her and cleaning my apartment, picking up some breakfast, and then hopefully stopping at a cafe to read. <laughs> run an errand and grab a gift for my grandma's birthday. I came back and I grabbed my grandma a gift and now I'm reading some more of Hamnet. It's getting good. There, Will and um, Anne are in this secret romantic relationship and Anne is kind of making her stepmother have to decide that Anne and Will need to get married. This main character is like so strong and written like very interestingly. I'm only 77 pages in. I will say the writing is a little bit distanced, so it is a little bit harder to get into, but I'm really liking the story so far um, and I'm excited to see where it's going. So I'm 80 pages into this book. Anne and Will are apparently gonna get married. I'm like 80 pages in and I'm not sure if I like it or not still. Like, I like it, but I'm not like in love with it as much as I thought I was gonna be, but I guess we'll see. Anyway, we're venturing to a coffee shop for better, brighter scenery. So maybe that'll make this book more interesting. Or maybe I'll get too distracted and I won't read as much as I thought I would. Regardless, the goal is to finish this book by the end of the day. We'll see if it happens. So I'm 
so we went to this really awesome tea shop and read for a bit and then we stopped at um a favorite local vintage place and tried on a couple of things window shopped and now we're in this weird in-between time where we need to go to my parents house in like two hours um and but also are kind of can't go back to my apartment so we're going to um stop by a lake and read outside somewhere um in the car because it's too cold to read outside outside so we actually did decide to come back because we ended up figuring out the time would give us enough time to come back so we read for a bit at the um lake but now i'm back um and i think i have enough time to read a little bit more before we head out to my grandma's um I'm starting to appreciate uh, Maggie O'Farrell's writing style a lot more. It's very poetic, which like I think ties into um, Shakespeare, especially his early work in sonnets. Um, so I think in terms of lyrical, uh, her lyrical style um, and kind of the idea of these characters really seeming like um, characters, um, while some people might kind of view them in some instances as shallow. Um, I also appreciated O'Farrell's also homage to Shakespeare in that these characters do seem like characters from plays, um, in just kind of the way that they're written. Um, even though they're given a backstory, they are kind of represented in a way that seems almost uh, stage-like. Another thing that I find really interesting in this book is um, Shakespeare is the only character in this book um, who's, who doesn't have a name. Every character in the, in the play or in this book has a name and is referenced to by the name that actually was Shakespeare's like relative which is really interested because or which is really interesting because like Shakespeare is the one who historically everyone knows so it's kind of interesting that like all of these other characters are given the spotlight and we get to know them a bit more whether we like to or want to or not but anyway just making my way through it I'm on page 129 um so i'll make some good headway before i head to my grandma's or to my parents and um we'll update you from then all right so i'm finally getting into this book so we've gotten over how the bubonic plague was kind of spread um in this like really kind of cinematic scene of a monkey and a young boy and a bead seller and it's described in a way that feels like it's almost a movie and I feel like by page 150 um the characters ha are much more described I know I kind of said in the last segment that the characters feel like they're in uh, written kind of like a like they were characters in a play and now I feel like O'Farrell has kind of really flushed these characters out. Um, we know their backstories. We know kind of why these characters feel sad or why they feel upset. The one character who I kind of wish that we had more of a backstory is, um, is Shakespeare's father, um, who is verbally and physically abusive. Um, and does all of these awful things. He's kind of known as the neighborhood drunk and is um, just kind of this awful guy. And I mean, I don't think awful people need to have any reasonings behind why they're awful, um, but part of me does want to know about this guy's childhood and wants to know a little bit more about this character just because I feel like we've gotten to know everybody's backstory a little bit more. 
I think knowing about this character as well as Agnes's brother Bartholomew, who is also on the complete opposite end of the spectrum, one of the nicest characters, he's insanely nice to his half-sister Agnes. That being said, I'm 150 pages in and I feel like I know more about these characters and I'm really excited about where this book is going. Anyway, that's where we're at. I have to rush out to go um, to this to this dinner that we're having for my grandma, but I'll be back to report back on this book when I come back. It's just We're back from um, birthday dinner with my grandma and um, I'm gonna try to not get sleepy. I'm gonna try to dip into more of this book. Again, the goal is to try to finish this by tonight. We will see. So I fell asleep last night, but I managed to get to page 220 before I did. And things got crazy because Hamnet ends up dying instead of the sister. Yeah. And I think that this book has definitely taken a turn into being a deeper dive into Agnes's kind of psyche and and how a mother might go through a traumatic event of losing their child um it's um it's definitely taken a dramatic turn in that way and in, in how O'Farrell kind of discusses grief and kind of loss um which makes me curious about how she writes her memoir um life 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 i think that's what her memoir is called um where she discusses her own kind of uh thoughts on personal loss i'm gonna keep reading this book um and i will report back when i'm actually done so i just finished the final page of maggie o'farrell's hamnet and it's still in the morning and um, I'm about to go um, to a play with my mom. Um, but I just wanted to end the vlog with some final thoughts on what I thought about the book. Um, so the thing that I liked most of this book was O'Farrell's use of language. Um, she uses very lyrical, poetic prose uh, to describe her characters and the scenery um, and there are some really cinematic scenes um, she really knows how to heighten um, kind of when dramatic moments happen uh, when she's describing um, how the sickness spreads from one animal to a person or when she's describing um, the scenes with Hamnet and him getting sick or um, when he's or when she's describing um, Agnes um, and kind of when Agnes is figuring out um, certain um, aspects of uh, of the book when, when there's a heightened moment O'Farrell is really good at kind of drawing out that energy within the book and writing it in a way that is um, beautiful and almost feels like a poem. I really loved Agnes's character. I thought that she was kind of a full-fleshed person, even though this was a fictionalized version of Anne Hathaway. It was still interesting to get to learn more about this fictionalized uh, personality, because I feel like in most cases when we learn about uh, Shakespeare's wife. Um, it's usually a sentence or two um, about her life and it was cool to get a backstory 
and uh, to learn about all of the aspects of her character. That being said, what took me out of the book at times was O'Farrell's writing style. Um, it was so poetic that at times I felt kind of disconnected or disjointed from the characters. So at times this her writing style really won out, but at times it kind of pulled me from the book. Um, also, I don't know, there there's this trope of women in literature where it's like, oh, she's not like anybody else. Um, and I definitely got that a little bit with Agnes's character. And it didn't detract me from wholly disliking the book. Obviously, I, I really loved the book, um, but I, I didn't really need a manic pixie um, dream girl character. And at times I felt that it, it tread a little bit on this line, very slightly, but, but every once in a while I got a little wisp of it and I wasn't sure if I needed it that much. I really love the book. I would rate it around a four and a half or a four out of five uh, stars. I would recommend this book to anyone who likes uh, books like Cersei. I think the author's name is Madeline Miller. Any book that she's written, it definitely gives off those kind of vibes of uh, strong uh, characters uh, with varying perspectives um, and a kind of historical retelling uh, that's done in a very creative, artistic way. Anyway, that was my weekend. Thanks for sticking around and watching the vlog. I'm Dog Eared Musings, and I'm Monica. And uh, if you like this video and you want to check out more bookish content, feel free to like and subscribe. Happy reading!